beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Say after me, God wants me to succeed. Say it, God wants me to succeed. My status is changing, it's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Oh, yes, God is changing everyone's story. Status is changing, it's no more decline. I'm on my way to better day. No matter where your family has been, prophesy it. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better day. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. The master key to attracting uncommon favor. Please make reference to my teaching, Activating Seasons of Greatness. There I teach that the key to greatness in life is favor. And I teach that there are two dimensions of favor. There is favor with God and favor with men. The Bible says, and the boy Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. I told you that it is possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. So, I told us that the key to having favor with God, there are three things that I taught us. I'm just recapping on the teaching. Three things. Number one, I told us is called the fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence. Reverence. Priority. Respect for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, I told us our tithing. 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 I can't remember what I said the third one was. But then, I remember teaching us that when it comes to favor with men, there is a requirement and the Lord asked me to recap it. I'm telling you, God has an agenda with us this year. Praise the Lord. God wants to break barriers and not only cause us to be healing people and bless people, but God wants to make people and families prosper. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a very serious issue in many families. And I told you this is Bethel. Praise the Lord. Diligence. Everybody say diligence. We're going to talk a bit, just a few minutes on diligence. 
What is diligence? Diligence is the virtue of hard work. The virtue of thoroughness. Diligence and mastery, really. Diligence and mastery. The ultimate key to attracting uncommon favor in this realm and in this system, please pay attention, is diligence and mastery. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, one of the things that God has helped us to understand is the balance and understanding on how the kingdom works, the components of the kingdom. Now, we have a lot of people who leave everything all to God. They say, Jesus has died. He's paid all the price. He should come to me freely. You will, you will be broke and you will fail in life. If that is the circumference of your belief about God. On the other hand, we have people who are just hustlers. They want to make it by any means. And they throw away the God factor. Both are wrong. Are you getting me? Diligence and mastery. Two keys. I've been challenging us last, um, I think it was last week. I did challenge us in this light again. Um, what is mastery? Mastery means comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or area. Comprehensive knowledge, skill, proficiency, competence. Genesis 41, please quickly. Genesis 41 from verse 36 to 46, just 10 verses. And let's look at one case study in the Bible. Genesis 41. There was a man in the Bible called Joseph. Forty-one thirty-six from verse 36. Okay, let's read very quickly. This was Joseph now revealing and interpreting the dream of Pharaoh. Verse 36 says, And that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not in famine. Verse 37. The Bible says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. Can we read together if you are there? One to read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this in whom the spirit of God is? He said, can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, this interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. Find a man discreet and wise and set him over this project that during the seven years they will gather plenty and during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy. And Pharaoh said, who is the person? In other words, he threw a challenge to the entire Egypt. Can we find such a man if you know you are that qualified, if you know you are that proficient, step up. No race was mentioned. He didn't say if you are an Egyptian or if you are a Jew. He said, can we find such a person? I want to bless that person. I want to lift and promote that person. But can we find such a diligent person? Such a skilled person. Such a proficient person. And the Bible says there was none. And then, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown thee this thing, there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art. He was not just lifted because he was a, he was a of, of the covenant and, and all of that. No. The Bible says the king testified. Pharaoh. He said there is none. There is none who is as discreet and wise 
And because of that, verse 40, thou shalt be over my house immediately. No board meeting. No discussion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of authority, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. 44, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And he cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Verse 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Look at that. 45 says, And Pharaoh called Joseph, you know, called him all the name, and he gave unto him his wife, Asena, and the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went all over the land of Egypt, the last verse. And Joseph was how many years old? How many years old? Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of Egypt. Everybody say diligence. Say proficiency. Listen to me. The world that we live in right now, if you want the favor, favor, that's the reward system of the kingdom. The favor of God. Many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access. I told you that you need to get my teachings, the full gospel. There I give you a balanced view of the dimension of God's grace and favor. Because I told you every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible Christianity. Read from Genesis to Revelation. Every time God wanted to bless a man, he demanded partnership on his own part. Is that true? It's not all up to God. And it's not all up to you. Your own part is to be diligent. To gain mastery. Hallelujah. I began to teach last week and I said that there are so many people in the body of Christ they are poor, they are average, they are poor at their place of work, they are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do. Different ministers of the gospel, they want crowd, they want grace, they want fame, they want popularity, but there is no diligence. No diligence. No mastery. Right? A man of God comes to stand on stage and says, don't worry, don't mind what I'm saying, just believe that the power of God will touch you. Let me tell you something. When you see a congregation gather like this, they are a mixed multitude. Not everybody is a daft. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who walk with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. Those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now. God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph, so many people in Egypt, the question I always ask is, didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record, but at least as a Pharaoh, he should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son, and to make Joseph a prize. It wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exalt Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker?
can we find that exceptional lecturer can we find that exceptional student can we find that exceptional man of god gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people you submit your cv there's no job they drive you everywhere and you just say well since they've rejected me everywhere let me go to the vineyard ministry is not for idiots ministry is not for foolish people this is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry whenever they see people going into ministry they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives they didn't give them a job and they said let's go into the vineyard the bible says he gave unto one five he gave unto one two he gave unto one one according to their several ability he had tested them through time and found out that some were more proficient than others. You must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life, especially in this season of God's glory. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But you must be diligent. You must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500000 Minimum. He does the job at his terms. The day he coughs, the whole company will go bankrupt. Everybody say mastery. Is God challenging us? When I came in, I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office. The Bible says you are the light. Say I am the light. You are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me. Influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies. To buy into your perspectives about life. When you are a man of influence, you sustain an ability that causes men to love your God, to love your principles. That's influence. The kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts. Right? And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation. People who are broke, suffering, failures in life but are just crying and say lord we love you sooner or later it will affect you when there is no food in your house you will not be able to fast you see the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money uncle or auntie remember we spoke last last um last week right dependency mentality take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent a lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you. What you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. 
you claim God is calling you into the healing ministry. You are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing. You, don't, you, are, not, you are not following the principles. There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic. They make blunders on stage. No Bible study. Prayer life zero. Right? Their comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy. Call to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk, they cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves, we will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph. Same story with Daniel. He reigned through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty-six to twenty-eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight. I tell you. Verse twenty-six. Are we there? It says, "And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zerada, Solomon's servant, whose mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah." A widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo's. And repaired the breaches in the city of David, his father. Verse 28. It says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? A mighty man of valor as a result. And Solomon, seeing the young man, that he was what? That he was what? He didn't say that he was anointed. He didn't say that he was a Jew. He didn't say that he was a male. He said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty man of David. One who fought single-handedly, threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands. The Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin. The Bible tells us that the Benjamites, Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so, were so fine in, in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous, made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jesus. Seeing that he was industrious. He said, no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. 
Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God opened doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you, both in the church and in the secular environment, the minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song... There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down, they say, Kai, Ken, ah, that song. And you say, really? You, you see how you are deceiving yourself? We, our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast. Because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They land the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. 
So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah katayaba. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community, you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us, please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say, this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months, he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs. Proverbs what? 10 verse 4. Who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus. Proverbs. Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4. It says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor. That dealeth with a slack hand. A lazy person. No inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shibalakura Sibraniana Balakaba. 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. He said, not slothful. The word slothful there means laggy. You are, not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? He said not slothful in business. Diligent, fervent, zealous in spirit. Serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord? You want to serve his body? You must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth i've tried but compared to where god wants to take me the journey is still far it will help you to humble yourself whether they write apostle jakes bishop jakes right it's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting it's a very ugly scenario my goal 
is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of, the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio, bio what? Biotech, that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. Competence. When you become competent, let me tell you brothers and sisters. All of a sudden where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow. Meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much. But competence. Please, there are many of us here, it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. What he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches and they will find him and not even ask what is it nobody will ask whatever and say come we are willing to pay you huh and you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say lord this church i already see my destiny no matter what you saw in your dream i guarantee you if you are not diligent you won't enter into it praise the lord you are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court, you can't arrest them. We we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by seven. You stroll around, you came late and say, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. 
God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long but the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place sharpen yourself become exceptional the Bible says and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance when John appeared with uncanny accuracy he knew that this was Jesus he said behold the lamb behold the lamb he didn't mistake Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath and while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room so that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah! Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. 
by the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do, that's what my Bible says. It said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional to deliver what is season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed and have been graced, I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Kabaraka. Sharpen yourself and then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming and I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they will know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed 
that Jesus Christ, after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then, together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20, downwards, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since, but he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant, and with my holy oil I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle, the architect of that construction, he was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship and the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you, when God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot, you spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available, then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your play your own part and tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you like Saul you will go back and they will say ah is Saul also one of the prophets when did you enter this dimension favor is when preparation meets opportunity it's not magical it's a formula and God is calling us wipe the tears of your family Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that. You must make up your mind brothers and sisters. That something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service. I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent. By March calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are are placing demands on the grace willing to pay any amount job or no job there are people who are not working but they are getting the salary of ceos because people will pay for your gift let me tell you it says buy the truth god put a price tag on the truth and if you have the truth men will buy the truth they will pay you and they will call it a privilege Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or, I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Master whatever he has given you. And tonight an anointing comes on it. And I send you like the foxes of Samson. And you will step in and begin to do wonders. The pride of every true leader. It's not that he becomes a superstar. I've said it again and again. That true leadership, the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders, not maintain followers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. 
this music ministry. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten, but I will be called Pula. Pula, the land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business, mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence exceptional competence don't let any man preach you against competence incompetence will make you poor incompetence will make you angry incompetence will make you a failure incompetence will make you average I must stand out. I must stand out. In my generation, I must stand out. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I'd like you to pray pray for grace to be outstanding lift your voice grace to be outstanding forget about the pain of today the bible says for our light afflictions which is what for a moment walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory pray while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen 
for the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you without bias. They will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials. Sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. insist that you must be touched this night insist that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down waste your time make sure you cry unto God tell the Lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the Lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't care what the issue is. Let your faith rise right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I see sick people all around inside and outside and I see all kinds of people but I want you to know tonight that the God of wonders is still in this place so let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy life your hands everyone hallelujah listen Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members, all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil, every covenant, every spell at the count of three, let the fire of God separate those people right now. One, two, three. Shake the and those devils. I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. Shake the The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God. I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. there's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere there is no hiding place not for witchcraft there is no hiding place I command judgment let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains hallelujah I see a lot of chains lift your hands again I see chains so many chains break chains Listen, 
some of you this change has lasted for years and decades i don't care how long it has been as you shout that name again i see many people outside you will know the chain has broken that embargo over your family you will know it when it happens because i hear sounds of chains at the count of three shout that name again with all your might and i command that as they shout may those chains break one two three chains of stagnation chains. Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus, now over families, any family under the sound of my voice, you have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families, Release the Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. And they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt. And after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of jesus annihilates the legal hold you have i don't care what covenant you have in the name of jesus therefore i speak to every foul spirit 
that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of jesus one two three go 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 out you go out you go out you go never to return out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood, I cost you. By the ministry of the blood, release the families, release their finances, release their destinies. Go now, go now. I compel you by the blood of Jesus. That blood opens the gates of captivity. That blood opens that gate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed. We open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthrough. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie, Stephanie, I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish first. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like, is it four children or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours, if it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify. And let's know if there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are on your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come, come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? Because the Lord is going to lift you. Why am I seeing a ring in your hand? I'm not seeing a physical ring. But it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring. Your wedding bells are ringing. Are you married? Huh? This is what I'm... <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed. We are a family. Marriage is not a bad thing. Abi mommy, is it a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. Because there is nobody 
and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen, my dear. You don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, it will make it happen. My brother, this year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does what what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. It is one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now because they have been talking about this woman she sees and people have been saying she's fake I'm saying if this woman is fake she will not enter this place I guarantee you except I'm not a man of God please she's not fake what she needs is is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened she has a lot of prophetic insight but the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken Hold hands, both of you. I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. Jembra Mato Zatali Kaparando Skolapaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a happy anointing. That is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing. Drink of that wine right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to help her. You won't be with her forever. But the Lord is going to lift you in due season. And you will begin to see in a strange way. May the Lord bless you. May he anoint you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the embargo of darkness over the family. Come. You are a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies in Jesus' name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is there's Newi. I know it's an Igbo place, right? There is there is a there is somebody I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having a problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her waist. Arthritis. You don't know. Yeah. You love God. Asleep. Yes. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not... Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Like... Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. 
Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Praise the Lord. For this program today, I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My Come on, give Jesus. God. Praise God. I'm I'm to, to, pray to break every chain. Break every chain. Let's go. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? <laughs> they just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request, not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money, sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Eleven. Yes, and I have six graduates. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? Let me talk. What happened to you? I fell sick last year, October, when they took me to the hospital. So we went for so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, sir. So they've left you to die. Yes, sir. Cut off of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. 
I release strength to these legs in the name of Jesus. I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come man. Don't worry, God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. You know, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this road. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the you have me. Let me yours. Please bring out. I give you. I give you. I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now please all those who came here specifically for healing miracles find your way to the front right now worship team give us a powerful session of worship as we pray please don't make it rowdy inside and outside aside from the, the family that I minister to if you came with a sick person please come and line up here quickly let's save time expect the power of God to touch you please you see what the Lord is doing and all of us who are standing if there is a loved one or somebody you know as you are standing connect to them please don't lose connection with this service some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jackson, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, 
I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly, you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request, ushers. Let's hurry up, please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side, please. Help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online, it's time for them to connect now so that we can... Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when you bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long. Let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things. Strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman. It's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Father, hear the prayers of your people. 
In the name of the Lord Jesus Let there be all kinds All kinds of miracles I agree with my brother All kinds of miracles Supernatural jobs Supernatural liftings In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Unto you that answer prayer will all flesh come. Is there anything to us we do? I am there. Okay, Lord, we ask you, blessed Lord, that every cry, every need, Lord, every pain, Lord, let things that look impossible by men, we pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hear that, though. We ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs. Amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord, the needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah Taya, he said is the discerner of the thoughts and the intent. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level. By the weapon of the prophetic. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 
I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. Makoto tekete Zkeparata Tilekotopai in the name of Jesus between now and the next miracle service step into those dimensions I prophesy to you step into those dimensions I prophesy to you step into those dimensions step into those dimensions, into those dimensions. hallelujah I pray for every student here. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God lose if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty may they tear down may they uproot every trace of wickedness may they tear down may they uproot in the name of jesus let missing scripts be found let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of jesus hallelujah for god has not given us the spirit of fear there are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down in the name of jesus the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage i cause fear from your life now i cause fear from your life now i cause fear i cause fear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. There are many who have been praying. Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you. That through a night vision. Mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of jesus christ there are people praying right now all you are you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction i prophesy to you the bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way i command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of jesus i pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand i pray in the name of jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of jesus i connect you i connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah 
I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you hallelujah I pray for your finances in the name of Jesus there are many who are giving you are tithing you are faithful but it just looks like when things are about to happen there are limitations in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare that beginning from next month I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet i command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the gentiles i pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the Bible says and he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures I pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of Jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life I bring that confusion to an end now I pray for all those who came here specifically trusting God for the fruit of the womb Mazuka parata teleka. In fact, I pray for you. Listen, not just physical barrenness, any area of your life. This is the year of the rain. And when rain falls, barrenness stops. Therefore, I command be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. In the name of Jesus. I command everything called dead in your life. And your family. I don't care for how long it has died. Your health, your business, your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command resurrection right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. 
there are people who desire God you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter I pray for you may the angel of the Lord's presence visit you you may not understand what I'm saying may the angel of the Lord's presence visit you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are using that brings bread help her please I pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer I put an anointing on your skill I put an anointing I put an anointing on your ability I put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands i just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen i told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what i'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help her please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen I want to pray as I stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen many of you will step into healing graces there's no time to move one by one but i'm going it's one of the major assignment god gave me tonight please believe it you will argue it at your own detriment there is a cheap route the help of god is here to lift you the help of god is here to take you lift your hands everybody father i pray that in the next two minutes let there be from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings i impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 i release it to you utterance in the name of jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance i i release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom i grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah
the final prayer I want to pray for you is honor. Many of you don't know what honor is. Honor is not the same thing as blessings. You can be blessed but not honorable. It says, and Jabez was more honorable. Honor. That fragrance that compels loyalty. That fragrance. Zamatic alive. Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice, inside and outside, may this grace that, that will bring honor to a man beyond your age, beyond your level, receive it now in the name of Jesus. I release it from the depths of my heart. Receive it in the name of Jesus. From today, everywhere you go, may honor follow you. And I declare these hands that are lifted like Aaron, like Joshua, lifted up the hands of his servant Moses, I command, may those hands never go down. May the Lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down. And I pray for marriages supernaturally. May God connect people supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you convinced that this word can make you a leader and it can make you a great person? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If we are achieving this, then I know that we are making progress. But if we are not achieving this, then sincerely speaking, before men, ministry may be moving. But before God, there is little effect that is, is being created. Hallelujah. Let your conviction about spiritual things be strong. I love the lady that said they brought somebody that was dead or dying and she laid, she laid hands on the person. Some of you will join in the shout, hey, hey, at least try. If you try and it doesn't work, no problem. But let it be that among the 12 people who were lamenting, you took a step and it didn't work, no problem. God will honor you for launching out to take that step. Some of you, when you want to pray, they tell you, please, oh, this is not the issue of prayer. Because you have not been doing it. When did you suddenly become a man of God? It has not been your lifestyle. You talk the way they talk. You do everything. Suddenly, you remember one koinonia message. You drank with them yesterday. Now you want to lay hands and they say, for what? I'd rather lay hands than you. We drank together. Be different. Be different. So different that you are noted for certain things about the kingdom. And when there is a need to do certain things as far as the kingdom of God is concerned, you become the reference point. This is transformation. And this is what this teaching is all about. And then at that point, God will empower you to demonstrate the reality of that kingdom. You will manifest wisdom that is beyond the comprehension of men. God will bless you. Every time people see you, they know you are a leader. You must not have PAs and people following you. No. There is a culture. There is a way of behavior. They are sharing food. Somebody gets, somebody is very hungry and you are not so hungry and that's the last meal and the Holy Spirit says, give the person and you are looking. You say, no, I'm not giving any. I came, I got my, you know, all these kinds of things. While you're seated, you are going to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I don't want to waste my time. I truly want to see transformation in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I do not just want to waste my time listening to Rema upon Rema, learning, learning all the cliches, learning all the powerful words, learning all the vocabularies, creating a form of religion without a sincere passion there are many of us who attend at least three or four programs every week but the fruit 
of the transformation is not evident in our lives we still talk the way we used to talk we still behave the way we still behave there is nothing that shows that there is a culture of the kingdom working in us Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh, and the ancient words in love. Ancient words. Ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words in one more time. Ancient words ever true. Changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the change me this is always my prayer koinonia is about change the symbol of koinonia in a man's life is change transformation 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 let there be change hallelujah I'm going to teach tonight briefly and then we'll pray. Envoys of his presence. Envoys of his presence. Praise the bread of life. Emmanuel. God with us. The one who saves. Praise the cup of life, that glorious spring that washes our sins away. And voice of his presence. Matthew 5. Help us, Spirit of the Living God. He's the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Living God. You're the Holy Ghost, Scepter of the King of Kings. You're the Holy Ghost, Seal of the Age. And voice of his presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Zibala Kusa Tabala Daba. All through scripture, we see that God's idea of the church or the believer has been to create an envoy 
that will communicate certain things that are in the mind of the spirit to the human race for every season hallelujah an envoy is is the highest governmental representative it's a governmental representative that is sent on behalf of a government on a mission an assignment hallelujah if we need to send certain people one of our brothers is getting married tomorrow and we're sending a few people they are envoys hallelujah whatever we stand to represent is what we want to see them promote there if we have a gift for the couple what happens we give them the gift and we trust them with that gift hallelujah with an assignment to go and deliver that gift hallelujah and there are certain people that god has anointed to be envoys of his presence carriers distributors to infect territories with the presence of god the power the culture of the kingdom hallelujah and tonight we are going to explore that understanding say after me i am an envoy say it i am an envoy a representative i'm an ambassador mean it from your heart say i am an envoy hallelujah matthew 5 jesus himself taught us this in chapter 5 from verse 13 he said ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt has lost its savor, with what shall it be salted he said it is thereafter good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men ready 14 one to read ye are the light of the world stop he said i am sending you as an envoy into a system that is characterized by darkness darkness in scripture talks of confusion talks of death talks of sin whatever does not have the charisma of god in it is darkness and the bible says ye are the light it didn't say you have the light it said you are the light hallelujah you are a city that is set not like a city you are a city you have been elevated upon a hill he said you cannot be hidden a christian a walking christian is not just one who has given his life to jesus christ it's not just one who prays in tongues it's not just one who is in ministry it's not just one who avoids sin great all of these things are great it's not even just ones who have rema no a christian is one who has taken the mandate of the kingdom as a personal responsibility he has come into the understanding that he's not just a son he's not just a servant he is an envoy he has come into a place of kingdom responsibility that not only have we received of god but we have been mandated to deliver something hallelujah envoys of his presence when jesus walked upon the earth the bible says we beheld his glory as of the one of the only begotten the bible says he was full of grace and truth and everywhere he went the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost is that true and with power and he went about doing what he was an envoy of the goodness of god because god was with him he carried the divine presence of god and he demonstrated the reality of that divine presence he had a culture the bible says every time he taught men were astonished they said what wisdom is this what authority is this we have not seen this in this fashion hallelujah when jesus walked to you and you were sick there will be a dramatic demonstration of the revelation of the kingdom he went to bethesda and saw a man who had lain there 38 years the bible says he looked at him and he said uh, what did he even tell him what was the question again 
he said do you want that i'll make you whole and he said there is no man that would help me as soon as i want to move to the to the to the to the waters somebody else will jump into it and listen look at an envoy he said no problem in other words all this your grumbling is not necessary i have come cheer up he said pick up your bed and go one minute a problem of 38 years dissolved in one minute that is the character of an envoy he steps into a place and begins to legislate on me. no grammar no long story the reality of the kingdom hallelujah charles and francis hunter of blessed memory great men and women of god one time they had so much of the presence of god upon them they entered a meeting and there were people on wheelchairs and they start they, they didn't even tell any story no prayer no nothing they brought an atmosphere and a culture and they demonstrated this flawlessly 100 people they lifted them out of the wheelchair 100 and voice of his presence hallelujah when naaman was afflicted the bible tells us in second kings chapter 5 that naaman was the captain of of, of 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 syria he was a great and mighty man the bible says but he was leprous and on account of his leprosy when they came and fought the nation of israel the bible says they took a little slave girl is that true and in the passage of time there was one strange envoy who was a seer who does not just go out anyhow the bible called him elisha hallelujah and the little girl told the captain he said oh that you would just follow me there is somebody i know who can help you and the man sluggishly said are you serious you don't know my situation hallelujah and cut the long story short they met the king and listen when the king was afraid nobody told elisha that the man elisha was watching like a television from his room and he said quickly tell the king why is your heart casted? Let him come and know that there is an envoy, that there is a prophet. This land is not barren. There are ambassadors who are alive and strong who will not let the powers of darkness lord it over people. God did not leave himself across this territory without a witness. He said, send him to come. And when he came, Elijah did not even go out. He sent Gehazi. He said, go and tell him it's a simple case. Go and watch seven times and go back free. Ah, that's simple. An envoy is speaking. There is a backing behind him. Hallelujah. One time there was scarcity and Jesus, listen, Jesus was trying to teach the disciples the mindset of being envoys. And when the people had not eaten, Jesus looked at the disciples. He said, go and give them food. Come on now, Jesus. Ah, the disciples said, no, this is not part of our ministry. Our ministry here is to help you. Don't disgrace us here. There is no food. These people are plenty. Jesus was teaching them something. He said, every time you see people think of dispensing, don't just think of receiving you are an envoy wherever you go go as light study the terrain of darkness and solve the problem don't join in the sympathy hallelujah are you getting blessed tonight that you are an envoy of his presence god has mandated you with an unction with an anointing your rema will not help the world until there is a demonstration of the practical reality of the fact that god lives in a man and the apostle calls it the mystery of godliness that god can dwell in a man such that you see an ordinary man but he's not just ordinary he's carrying a backing that this earth cannot speak the man tells you you are blessed and all the forces of nature align themselves and make that word come to pass that's an envoy hallelujah there are many of our homes listen to me that are under demonic yokes 
there are many of our family members that if no one arises to help them they will die you are that envoy god seeks envoys that he will send to different territories hallelujah praise the lord i've had the privilege of counseling people week after week and oh what joy fills my heart the moment the people begin to come one by one i am conscious of the fact that i am an envoy and you see them coming and crying oh man of god the devil has oppressed us and i tell them cheer up i don't tell them cheer up as stories i don't tell them cheer up as many men of god just comfort people without result they say don't worry uh, our lord and god no envoy there is nothing that shows that you are an envoy darkness comes and the person goes back with that darkness we must contend for levels where if men meet you just once they will know they met an ambassador don't get emotional about this message and not do anything about it hallelujah the family came to me for counseling one of their sons had given the family a very big problem and when they came, I told them, I said, it's okay. This is the devil here. Hallelujah. In less than one minute, the devil is casted out. I prophesied blessings to the family. It was not up to two days. Their father bought a new car, an envoy. This is not trial and error. You have become a portal for heaven to find expression at every given time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that there is a dimension of kingdom assignment that has been committed unto you to be a demonstrator of the presence, the reality, the culture, the life of the kingdom? I vowed to God and I cried years ago and I still cried. I said, Lord, I don't want to be those many preachers with rema that cannot be defended. As a student, before you graduate, there's something called defense. All the stories you have been talking, you are going to stand and say it before people that matter. Is that true? They are going to give you a topic that you think validates you for graduation. Oh, Jesus is this, the same yesterday, today and forever. He can do this, he can do that. And they bring somebody oppressed and you are just looking and wondering. This is why we teach you these things. So that you will be equipped. Oh, I've had testimonies of many of our people and I've been so blessed. The destruction they are doing to the kingdom of darkness in their spheres. Some of them just went home. They had been waiting. This strike, as bad as it is, has given an opportunity for some people to arrange Satan in their family once and for all. They went home as envoys. Hallelujah. The koinonia teachings that we send by the Spirit of God they go as envoys of power. Envoys of the presence of God. That's why a lot of people have been touched that we may never see. While we are sleeping, the Bible says, Abel, though dead, yet speak it. For as long as the jurisdiction of our Christianity is just to receive, get blessed, find a life partner, be very happy, get breakthrough, we will never be relevant as far as the advancement of God's kingdom is concerned. Are you listening to me? Unfortunately, this is what the congregation of the Nigerian church is predominantly made of. People who come to God with numerous problems, God solves the problem and they don't want any kingdom responsibility again. All they want is to sit down and let a great man of God keep displaying the anointing, keep doing everything, and the people keep sitting there. Are you going to church? Yes, I'm going to church. You go. No. See, listen, brothers and sisters. No matter how much we love people, not everybody in this city is going to be able to come here. Are you getting me? Is that true? No matter how we love people, there are many people. Sometimes people send us messages and say, I wish, I wish that koinonia will come and have a program or you have a program somewhere and i tell them who gave you our number and they now say oh a brother somewhere i say go and tell that person to pray for you hallelujah take the step and fail honorably 
God will bless you. If you are ashamed and embarrassed because of your ego, forget about being a champion in the kingdom. Many of you, this is what is stopping us. Hallelujah. My own blood sister did not have a job for a long time. I knew that this thing was demonic. I just have not been home for a very long time. And when I was going home, I, I, I had the opportunity to meet her and I prayed with her. I told her, I said, she was trying to give me explanation. I said, don't worry. The explanations are not necessary. Believe me, I know what the problem is. And I prayed for her. And that was the end of it. Praise the Lord. She got a job in Benway State. When can you look at somebody, a barren woman, and say, Madam, you are trying to come for Koinonia. They are not around, but they have been teaching us this thing. And Madam, will you allow me to pray? She will look at you and say, Please, I want Josh. Please. I know what I'm, I'm serious about this child. I'm not playing here. Don't come and play with my womb. No. You say, Madam, just allow me to pray. And you stand and say, Lord, you are real. And I want you to demonstrate the reality of your kingdom. Some of you say, What if she doesn't give birth? Did you collect money? Did you collect money? You get into trouble if you collected money. Did you collect money? It's just say, Madam, let me pray for you. And some of you, for the first time, as you lay hands on the people, suddenly you will see a demonstration of the kingdom. And the person comes back and says, I have not slept in one week. That simple word you said, be healed. I have been sleeping like a baby. And then you know that the kingdom has come in that environment this has nothing to do with MOG are you getting my point it should be your default life do you believe what I'm saying look at your loved ones brothers and sisters please look at me there are some of you in your families there is nobody who is born again be honest with me is that true you are the first person God brought out who do you think will go and change them somebody else there are many of you there are forces of witchcraft i went for a program and when they finished the program uh, some people just ran to me while i was counseling and they told me that their mother just broke her leg immediately the mother broke the leg some of the neighbors they said oh yeah get chicken get chicken quick i said what is chicken having to do with this broken leg they said if you want this leg to heal get chicken quick i remember one time my mother hit um, I think she, I, I don't know what happened. She hit, uh, is it a goat or something? And people, hey, stop. Say she look for one error. She must look for one error or something and put in the mouth of the, of the, 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 the bed or the goat or whatever. Say if you don't do it, ha. A time came, they came to dig a well in our house. They said, sir, we are finished. We need chicken. There's a way we do it for water to come out. You are the envoy that will stop that nonsense in your territory. A bishop in this country, a bishop in this country, baths his children with blood before giving them out for marriage. And one of his daughters called me one time and said, this thing happened to my elder sister. I know what is happening in their house now. The lady cannot give birth. What is all these things? And they want to do it. Bishop! And the man told her, you better come. Oh, this thing has been like that. That there are some people that are doing traditional Christianity. I hope you, you, you are. They are. They are born again. But enter their room. There's one ancient arrow that they gave them. And one jazz that they put in the bowl. And some candles. Eh? And some ropes. They don't use them. But they have kept them. When the going gets tough. The tough gets going. They know how to go and pull it out. Many families have not totally divorced themselves from a lot of tradocultural things. There are still all kinds of witchcraft festivals and cultural activities that happen in our homes. People are happy. They are comfortable. All kinds of devilish sacrifices are given. You are that envoy that God is raising. Listen until your, your Christianity begins to confront the gates of hell, you are still joking. If your Christianity has not yet begun to pose a threat to the gate of hell, then you are still playing. 
there are some of us ladies here nobody in your family gets married will you not be the first person to say not only will I break that I will break it first from my life and go back and release everyone that belongs to me from that captivity some of us is the cause of poverty right from wherever it has come to, even if you get job in presidency you won't be able to buy a bicycle why you will not explain because there are all kinds of yokes hallelujah and God is empowering you and sending you everywhere the Lord grants me the opportunity to go and minister every time it's time for the ministration I just begin to feel happy for that ministry and that territory because I am coming as an envoy I know that there is a government that backs me and they that with me are mighty and strong everywhere the Bible says he went he was doing good have you been doing good please listen to me and take it seriously Jesus said you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill say I am an envoy say it I'm an ambassador I have a mandate to take the presence the culture and the life of heaven to every sphere of influence if you are not doing this then you are not advancing the kingdom now look at me I want to show you a very big key and then we'll pray there are some of you that may say sir but sincerely I have been taking steps it's just that it has not been working how many of you belong to that category tell the truth you have been taking steps don't raise your hand if you have not taken any step I took a step I was bold I made an audacious statement at home I had to go back and cover my head with blanket don't be ashamed how many of us are in that category you've taken steps at least you've said something you prayed for somebody nothing happened but at least you did something let me see your hands listen to what I'm about to show you because you will be very surprised I want to activate something right now hallelujah praise the Lord listen please look up it's one thing to know that you are an envoy of the kingdom it's another thing to understand the keys that govern the release of God's presence and God's power. I have seen anointed men of God get frustrated when it comes to the point of demonstrating what they teach. When it comes to Bible studies, when it comes to sharing the word, talk is cheap. But when it comes to walking in the reality and bringing men into that experience, this is where a lot of people become powerless. Why is this so? Because if the kingdom of God is all about sharing and teaching, there are some of us right now, there is even no need to be pursuing again because honestly God has opened our eyes to deep things. But there is nothing as frustrating as talking without authority to work in present tense consistently and continually. You come and say, every power in this place, we are going to pray. There are demons keeping people down and you are going to be released. And then at the end of it, you say, all right, I, I hope that this message blessed you. I hope you were motivated and challenged. And the sister said, ah, what about the oppression? You have been making me rejoice. Hallelujah. Or the man of God sees somebody on wheelchair and just dodges as if he didn't see the person. He said, yes, what did you even say is your problem? He said, my own is headache. He said, come, power. Brother, we must contend. Listen, we have not all arrived there, but there should be a, a passion in our heart that we will not stop until we get there. Can I tell you something? One demonstration of the reality of the kingdom will solve 20 or millions of talk. There, there are too much talkatives in the body. Habalists don't talk too much. They demonstrate. Is that true? A priest can be in a city. He cannot even speak very well. Yet the ripple effect of his influence and his presence is being felt. You do anything without inviting him, you will fail woefully. 
and then the failure will make you to come and visit him and you say it's not done this way with this little lesson let it be known to you that i may be in this coven but i'm more influential than your community leaders many of us are looking for pulpit for people to feel the effect jesus did not have a pulpit stephen did not have a pulpit they had presence everybody say presence you don't need a pulpit to let people see the power and the glory of God. You don't need a ministry, a title. What you need is an undeniable presence that principalities and powers must submit to. Hallelujah. I don't know if the woman is in this place, but just permit me to share a bit of the testimony. A woman came to me for counseling and I was surprised. I've heard about this but I've never seen it one on one hallelujah a woman who came for counseling who gave birth to a baby it was a still birth but the baby came out with the face of a monkey and the body of a human being welcome to planet earth where everything is possible why is it possible because there is God, there is Satan. Both are real and are walking. You are the only one who is left. You are not walking. Where that kind of evil can happen, that a spirit can create an imprint of itself and it will materialize in this realm. Where are the envoys? Where are the envoys that are represented across families? The Bible says that in, in, Psalm, in Psalm 82, it was a summoning. God was summoning the mighty men. He said, the Lord stands in the congregation of the mighty. He had to call them and say, what is going on? He said, you have allowed the earth. You know not, neither do they understand. He says, so they grope in darkness. The earth is out of course. Where are the people who are supposed to bring order to the earth? He said, have I not said, ye are God's? And all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Where are the envoys? Some of you are only benefiting, getting blessed. The devil comes in, you open the door, he enters our families, wreck the lives of people and we are just watching. Can't you pray? Where is your prayer language? Where is the grace to lock yourself and say, There is an envoy in this house. There is an envoy. The devil is trying to put your family under some kinds of things. Give yourself three days prayer and fasting and tell yourself you are contending to release certain things. But we have a bunch of lazy Christians who all they want is their personal comfort. Three days? Ah, Josh, if it was 6 to 12, I can manage. Everybody say, I'm an envoy. Say it one more time, I'm an envoy. Listen. How many members in your family do you want to see the devil finish them before you know God is speaking to you? I'm talking to someone here. How many people in your community are you not seeing the handwriting of Satan everywhere? What are you doing about it? There are families that don't tithe and they are dying and envoy. Have you ever gone to tell them, listen, the reason why this thing is not working is you are violating certain principles of the kingdom. If you tell them and they refuse, no problem. The Bible says, how shall they hear until someone be sent, until there is a preacher. Praise the Lord. I refuse to allow the devil have a field day in my family. Hallelujah. These horns that are judging the lives of people, judging destinies. That's why it gives me pleasure to pray for people. I can pray and minister to people with all my heart from morning till night. Because this is what we are anointed for. We are not just anointed to wear suits. We are anointed to do the works of the kingdom. And can I tell you something? This is the mandate of everybody here. To dislodge the gates of hell. I went home and my younger sister was telling me. She said, I've not slept for days. I said, I, I, what is all this one with my younger sister? 
and I prayed for her. I gave her communion to go and take. She said as soon as she took that communion, she slept in a way she has not slept in a long time. I said, this is a signature to principalities and powers. He is in Joss. Trace him with a spiritual GPS. He has come to Joss. That means the powers of darkness must bow. There are many of us that need to stand and say, wherever I go, the presence of God is there. And because the presence of God is there, there must be order in that place. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is able more than able to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able more than able to handle everything that comes my way is able more than I could ever dream he is able he is more than able he's able to make me what he wants me now look up I want to show you a very powerful key for years I prayed for people with certain sicknesses and infirmity and I found out that these people were not just healed. There were others that were healed. God was seeing breakthrough here and there but there, there seemed like there were certain situations that would not bow. Every time I was praying for the people, I felt helpless myself. You know there's a way you can pray for somebody, you know that nothing really happened. It's just that if you want to lie to yourself. There's a way you lay hands and you are praying for somebody. At the end of the prayer, even the person is looking at you. You know that nothing really happened. That was the situation. And many preachers can get comfortable and say, after all, I'm doing well. There are ministerial doors opening. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, what is wrong? I have seen preachers walk to a sick body in less than one minute. One minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was in a crusade ground when I watched Reinhard Bonke with my own eyes. I was there for six hours. I helped to carry some of the people who were sick because I said I must get this anointing. He casually finished preaching and he took a cup of water and devils were just shaking, waiting for a command. And this guy jokingly, without sweating, Blind eyes be open. Deaf ears be open. Cripples walk. I saw it. It's not that they told me. Somebody we wield. I saw this thing. They were lifting the person. Everybody was trying to touch the person. To stand up. I joined with my hand. I said whether I'm contributing to it or not. And this guy stood up and began to walk. Brothers and sisters. It's not that I've never seen cripples walk. But let me tell you. There is something about coming near a real miracle and verifying it for yourself. Hallelujah. I saw blind eyes open. I saw a lot of things happen. I said, Lord, something is not fair in this equation. And whatever it is, I will go and find out. How can a man casually lean on a pulpit and command eyes to open command ears to open and the devil is helpless at his command and i'm here sweating over certain issues and they are just not working that means the problem is not from god the problem is certainly from our end here and i went and i began to explore god wants to answer somebody's question right now i want to show you a powerful mystery never forget it Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 16. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As you open it, just pray in tongues. Ah. 
Arise, shine, your light is come. This is what will happen to somebody this night. You will arise, your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You will arise, your light is come. Tonight God will show you a key. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Prophesy to yourself one more time. I will arise, my light is come. Sing it one more time. I will arise and shine. Arise. And the glory of the Lord. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Matthew 16. Jesus showed us something powerful. A mighty key that will open you to a door of the demonstration of power and of the miraculous please don't trivialize what you are about to hear let the eyes of someone be open my god let the eyes of someone be open hallelujah listen now look up please verse 13 when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi listen Jesus had been walking with his disciples let me have two or three disciples I am Jesus hallelujah now Jesus follow me Jesus went everywhere with these people is that true they watched him demonstrate miracles. They saw a lot of things. These guys were amazed. They saw the sea, the waves. They saw the way situations were helpless at the presence of Jesus. And Jesus said, gentlemen, I always hear you conversing. He said, who do men say that I am? They see this mighty man doing miracles. And I'm sure they have been talking. Some have said he's fake. Some have said this guy may be one Belzebub somewhere. He said, who do they say I am? And the disciples were happy in verse 14. The Bible says that they were so excited because it was a secret question they had been asking themselves. And they said, some say you are John the Baptist. Why? Because John the Baptist had been caught in the prison and they didn't see him. Some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. Because the Bible says, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, Malachi 4, Elijah, the spirit of prophecy will come. So you are that manifestation of Elijah. And others said, Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, who wrote a lot about the lamentations of, of the spirit of God. He said, oh, you are just one of the prophets. And then he laughed. Now follow me. He said, all right, I have heard what they say. You have walked with me. You have seen me do miracles. You participated. What do you say that I am? Okay, they say I'm a prophet. Fine, they are wrong. But you, you saw the miracle. They said it was fake. But you, you were in Koinonia. You saw the demons. You saw them being casted out. It's not something that you watch on TV that you say it was He said in light of all that you have seen, what is your conclusion about me? He said, what do you say that I am? Listen. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Next verse. And Jesus said unto him, hmm, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, son of Jonah. He said, for flesh and blood, as that means this operation is not in the realm of flesh and blood if you ever want to walk in it flesh and blood cannot deliver this dimension of result he said this revelation you've had now it is not by flesh and blood are you getting me 
flesh and blood has not revealed it to you he said but my father which is in heaven listen Peter you know why Jesus asked them Jesus needed to ask them to initiate a principle that he was going to teach the body of Christ verse 18 he said and I say unto you thou art Peter listen and upon this rock what rock the rock of the revelation you just caught what is the revelation the revelation is the fact that nothing just happens by flesh and blood until there is a spiritual understanding that backs the activity upon that revelation i will build the structure of my church that means for every time you will perform any activity there must be a revelation that you build upon otherwise the activity will just be normal are you getting this revelation in other words listen i can lay hands but the realm of the spirit will check what revelation do i know that activates the power over this activity if there is no revelation power will not flow it's a law in the spirit peter i see that you have gotten a spiritual understanding it is upon this understanding i will build my church to function that means whatever they have to do they will first build on a rock a revelation must be the platform for any activity to be carried out communion without revelation powerless anointing without revelation powerless so i can lay hands i tell you i feel the power of the holy ghost in a very mighty way he said i will build my church upon a revelation when you get this revelation you will step into a realm where you become an envoy listen 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 to me the bible says a time came when peter james and john who became the pillars of the church they went with jesus is that true to the mount of transfiguration and the bible says listen we were going to see the practical demonstration of that scripture the bible says they brought an epileptic patient everybody watch come sir they brought an epileptic patient now it was the turn of the disciples to heal is that true the bible says they kept doing everything that jesus did exactly but nothing happened is that in your bible they did exactly they saw jesus doing everything they did it the guy didn't get healed and when jesus came down with three of the disciples he saw his disciples struggling that was what grieved his heart he said until now because he knew it was a law it would have happened without him anyway and the bible says he looked at the boy he says since when did he have this condition and they said since he was a child it throws him into the fire throws him into whatever and he said i believe help thou my unbelief the father said and the bible says jesus rebuked a deaf and dumb spirit out of him and the bible says the guy was manifesting like you always see here and fell as though he was dead people thought he was dead and they picked him up and he got up he was sound the disciple said in one minute we did the same thing what did you do differently is it not the rebuking we also rebuked we rebuked him we were tired power did not flow i'm showing you the key why you have not been seeing the move of god it's not about cramming the words i use you will say the same thing and not see anything there is a secret hallelujah many people think it's about talking like the man of god or dressing like the man of god or reciting what the man of god is saying that will not bring power brothers and sisters 
when Jesus did that and the demons obeyed him the disciples went and met Jesus listen the disciples say ah, why couldn't we cast out see when you are studying your Bible when you see Jesus about to reveal something pay attention the disciples were asking why they could not do these things and Jesus said because of your unbelief very simple like that because of your unbelief then he says however this kind goeth not but by fasting and prayer hold on so he told them the problem was unbelief and he told them to remedy unbelief part of the spiritual activities that will happen is fasting and prayer when you fast and pray something happens in your spirit that brings you to a position where you can now believe listen just follow me i want to establish something very very powerfully when jesus did that listen a time came when jesus now said all right guys i have tested you a while he said go in my name go not everywhere but to the lost ship of israel go two by two listen now it was their turn the bible says they went they were all fidgeting and they now looked at somebody and said in jesus name suddenly they saw the demon obey they said ah this thing is working oh they tried it again they saw that it worked they didn't even know what was happening and the bible says they returned rejoicing and said finally even they said even the demons were subject to us in thy name jesus said uh -uh, you have not gotten the point don't just rejoice that demons are subject to you rejoice because your name is you know is written in heaven and so on and so forth and then a time came listen jesus said as my father has sent me he said so send i you hold on it's not just saying nature there was a way i walked in the earth there was something that made those miracles to happen he said now i speak that let there be access to you to walk in those dimensions so that you'll be able to see those miracles that means listen please for every time you carry out a spiritual activity and it works let me tell you what happens in the spirit there is a system in the realm of the spirit that cross checks whether you understand what you were doing or not if there is no revelation that backs that activity power will not flow are you getting my point the sons of skiva they call that man they say we adore you the demon said not so i am seeing you in the spirit your house is built on sand where is the rock upon which this laying on of hands is built upon i do not see any revelation for that reason i will not go listen brothers and sisters do you know the power of this communion that we take people just take communion oh he's blessed and we take and nothing happens but the day you step into the revelation of what it can do the power of god will change that communion to the literal blood and body of jesus christ and it will answer in your body at once there are many christians trying to do spiritual motions without revelation and the bible told us about those people he said there were two people that built one built on a revelation a rock is that true another built on sand he was just building on religion the bible says now the wind came and tested it and the one who was built upon a rock revelation there was he was not just giving for nothing he was not just tithing for nothing there was an insight in the spirit that makes him to carry out that activity so i don't just pray in tongues because i'm seeing prayer band pray i'm praying on a rock there is a revelation i have come to know what prayer can do so every time i pray power flows through that revelation to edify my spirit and produce results this is why the prayer life of many christians is is not working they humiliate themselves pray for hours and wonder why things don't happen What rock have you been laying hands on the sick upon? What is the revelation that granted you access? Based on what did you prophesy to that brother 
and say in the name of Jesus, doors open. What was the rock that supported that prophecy? Hallelujah. When David was about to defeat Goliath, he knew that he cannot make empty noise. And he said, you come to me with your spares, but I come to you in a name. There is a name I know. There is a covenant I have. There is a revelation. David and Goliath, on account of my covenant with Jehovah, I will take off your head and I know the power will flow. And God said, that is it. You have gotten the equation. Now you bring out the sling. How can an ordinary sling kill a man? A revelation produce power. Envoys of power. This is why you see all these things that are happening, happening. It will happen every time, forever. It's like a switch. When you know how to turn it on, you become an infant of fire. So you enter anywhere. You are an envoy. You know how to compel powers to bow. You know what to say to make them answer you. You know what to say to make them leave. You know what to say to dislodge the powers of darkness. There is something you must know there are many preachers who preach they listen to a man of god's revelation they copied it and they are pasting it they preach a message that is supposed to bring healing but healing does not happen they preach a message that should bring breakthrough but breakthrough does not happen take your place take your place Take your place, 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 call his name, Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Hallelujah. Hear me. When I caught this revelation, I was excited. And the first time we had the opportunity to organize our crusade as a ministry, it was now the time to put this in practical proof. Hallelujah. And in that crusade ground, there were sick people. There were all kinds of oppressed people. And when we began to see the power and the glory of God, I said this thing works it's not a lie the fault is not from God there is a fountain you can become a walking dispenser of the kingdom a dispenser of power when men shake you something will happen in your life because you are full of the word for everything there is a revelation even when you shake people you know that you are a blessing so that revelation will force something to get into them this may be the missing link behind your praying for the sick you have laid hands but you are just copying light has not come upon you there is no unction that supports what you are doing Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me.
the desperation of your soul. Follow them, not him, them, them, a congregation, a people who believe God enough to know that he's not playing. When he says all power belongs to him, he means it. We are going to pray. I like you to pray and say, Lord something in my spirit that will cause light to enter me i want to begin to see fruits come on now pray koinonia this is not how you pray i want to see prayer warriors i want to see men of prayer Every demon power, hear me, every power, every yoke, right now, in the name of Jesus, come out of God's people, right now, come out, come out, come out, now, every force, every yoke, every hey. spell, inside and outside, I challenge you, go, I command you every yoke that has tied you down, every yoke that has tied your family down, every curse, every protection, pray, pray. Pray. There is power. There is fire. Hey. 
Paraka Patai command powers in the name of Jesus at Koinonia destinies are changed at Koinonia eyes are liberated at Koinonia generals are raised and voice of power and voice of grace men of dexterity men of authority men of audacity confronting death confronting territory without fear hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. What many of us need is an unction from the Lord that will suddenly make the things you read become alive. It's a spirit. It's called the spirit of revelation. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. I want you to receive it inside and outside with all your heart. It's time for you to begin to walk as an ambassador. Hallelujah. I'm going to count three. And at the count of three, I'd like you to shout the name Jesus. And as you shout, something will come upon your life. Are you ready? One, two, three. Take it, 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 receive it, the spirit of revelation, outside, take it, outside, let it come like fire, eyes be open, yes, be open, let the spirit of faith come upon you. Take it, faith to believe, faith to believe, faith to believe. Command miracles. Let blind eyes be open. Let deaf ears be open through your hands. Whoever you bless is blessed. Whoever you bless is blessed. When you speak, your words are backed up by an authority that is not of this realm. Your voice will be like the voice of God. Your voice will be like the voice of God. Whatever you stop will stop. Whatever you stop will stop. Whatever you find is bound. Whatever you lose is lose. Envoys of his presence. I pray for you from today. Let the manifest presence of God, let the angel of his presence begin to walk with you. That everywhere you go, you don't need to tell men you are anointed. There is an angel of his presence that will go with you. Sinners will break down when they see you. Devils will cry out without you casting them. I proclaim upon you from tonight you become an envoy of power, an envoy of his presence, an envoy of his glory. Under the apostolic unction, I command as touching the grace given to me if I be sent of God. Let this mantle fall on as many people. Envoys of power. 
envoys of power, envoys of miracles, envoys of wisdom, envoys of breakthrough. Go and command breakthrough. Go and release your family members, the cause that has kept them. Go as a savior. Go and command marriages. Go and heal the barren. Let the barren be healed. Go and raise the dead. Go and raise the dead. Go and cast out devils. Prophesy business breakthrough to people. Prophesy career breakthrough. Your words carry power. Your hands carry power. Here at Koinonia, I stand as an apostle of God and I proclaim my God the same power that backs me. Let it back your people. The same authority that backs me. Let it back your people. Listen, the journey of my life, listen to me please, has been a journey of progressive walk with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Listen to me please. Exactly a month ago, hear me, I was sleeping. And the Spirit of God woke me. He said, it's time for you to step into a new phase of the anointing. And a new phase. I always see it. I see a military man in the Spirit. And then a batch is added. And the Lord says, there are many more responsibilities. And there is an anointing. And I prayed, I said, Lord, you cannot just be empowering me alone. Your people need to walk in this kingdom power. And all through, the Lord had been brewing it in my heart. And the Lord kept telling me, it is my desire. Let your people believe me enough. Moses said, I desire that my spirit will even come upon everybody. My greatest desire is not to be one invincible man of God. No. But that there will be people. And you are these people. To spread across. Hallelujah. And from the time the Spirit of the Lord told me this, I knew that He increased the anointing upon my spirit. And He measured a thousand cubits. You can know, you can see a man that walks with God and say, This is different. Something has changed. A thousand cubits. And this is why whenever I receive it, I make sure that everybody is a partaker of it. If you don't walk with it, it is not my fault. But in the days to come as we prepare for next year, you will see things that will surprise you. When you are faithful with the level of grace that God gives unto you and you are diligent, you will know and everybody around you will know when something, a thousand cubits has been measured again and there is a rise. This is why I worship him. Brothers and sisters, don't get emotional about this meeting alone. And don't get arrogant over the anointing you have received. Listen, authority in the spirit is for you to go and be a blessing, not to go and build an empire. 
do not emulate these wrong things men of God try to bring to the body of Christ to make it look like there is one superstar let me tell you every one of us have been anointed and called whether in business whether in education these anointings are not just for healing the sick alone but opening people up to dimensions of the spirit and if you do not use this and you let it dormant, it will dry up in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are going to pray just one prayer point and we are going to round up. You are going to say, Lord, this anointing I have received, I want to see it working. I'm tired of receiving things and falling down and I cannot say this is what happened. Please pray. I beg you, my brothers and sisters, if you will pray this prayer from your heart. Say, Lord, bring a sick body to me. Bring an oppressed person to me, oh God. Bring a sinner my way. Let me put this unction and this revelation to work. Bring a family my way. I'm ready to work as an envoy of power. Pray and say, Lord, the things I'm taught in Koinonia, I don't just want to be a listener. I want to be on fire. There are many of you who just love God casually, but today you are talking to the Lord and He's hearing you. You are saying, Lord, I'm joining the band of spiritual people on fire. Malakate prefekate baladaba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you an assignment. Everyone here, this week, I want you to call every member of your family and tell them, tell me one thing. I have been taught in Koinonia that I'm an envoy of power. Call your family members. And say what are the issues I want to speak I'm not agreeing with you I am coming as an envoy this is not the issue of agree with me I am coming with an authority that is not of this realm whether they believe you or not you don't need to be hard on them listen sister even if you look weak everybody knows you to be a bad girl something has happened to you are you getting me don't let the devil take your yesterday and say even you you want to prophesy yes even you the bible says when the spirit of god came upon saul he became another man it is this another mind dimension that we are releasing you to go and manifest that the people that have seen you you are in a shop and people just see you sit down customers are not coming and you say mommy watch what will happen father just as i have been taught in the name of jesus i compel men to come and patronize this and you sit back and suddenly you will see people coming out of everywhere and you tell your family members this is the signature of the kingdom the kingdom comes every time an envoy manifests the will of god so go to those families those barren people you know those neighbors you have never prayed for them because you are afraid you say the fibroid is too big or the person is totally blind just try it try it everybody young and old make this week the week that you take steps of faith you are seeing one sinner that god is always talking to you that this person will be a great person you are afraid of confronting the person let this be the week that you go in love and tell the person my brother I need to talk to you jesus loves you and you will be surprised that this same power this is how you will see the person break down and you will be wondering what is happening hallelujah you know somebody that has been writing jam writing jam writing work writing work and you know the person is serious it's a different thing if the person is lazy or somebody that has always been stealing somebody fornicating every time he loves god he's trying to stop you tell him i now know what is wrong i just want you to let me pray for you and you say satan thou foul devil of lust you get out of his life and you watch and see the transformation that comes from his life some of you need to go and lock the door and you be a prophet over your own life 
lay hands on yourself and begin to prophesy and say Satan an end has come you are seeing your brother and sister their marriage is about breaking no child now I have taught you here that barrenness is not a medical condition barrenness is a spiritual condition it's a sign that there is a presence of a spirit in that place and if you don't get that devil out of there they will use every kind of medical therapy and it will not work hallelujah praise the lord now listen to me very quickly everybody please stand on your feet inside and outside there are people here who need to make it right with jesus christ there are people here who love the lord with all their hearts please listen some of you have been going to church you have done a lot of spiritual things please listen especially for those outside but you have never made a decision for jesus christ you have heard preachers preach every time telling you that there is an assignment listen you are not a biological accident you were born for a reason not just for heaven alone but to be an envoy of his presence an envoy of grace an envoy of wisdom an envoy of creativity hallelujah tonight is that night when many of us will need to find rest there is no need arguing with destiny tonight is a night of destiny you can sit back and pretend as though everything is all right or you can say truly i need jesus christ in my life i have had preachers preach this again and again but i have not seen the need but right now the word of god has come and there is another category of people you have found yourself genuinely coming to the cross and giving your heart to the lord but the sincere truth is over time you have derailed from the things of god such that there is even nothing that really shows that you are a christian both categories i'm going to pray for you it's my pleasure to bring you to a place of rest wherever you are shame on the devil tonight because finally you are going to accept the call of god don't let the devil take this opportunity remember there is a prophetic destiny upon your life i don't care what you have done or what you have not done men may condemn you but there is love for you in this house and tonight we are standing in partnership with the lord to say you can have a new beginning inside and outside wherever you are leave your seat and run out here right now i want to pray for you god bless you as you come don't wait for anybody don't be afraid inside and outside god bless you they are coming they are coming god bless you shame on the devil don't let your friends stop you god bless you sister god bless you brother outside keep coming there are people outside Koinoni, I appreciate them. Your sacrifice of a clap offering to them. God bless you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, tonight is the night of destiny. I have seen your wonders. And I know that there is a call upon my life. Clap for them. They are coming. Clap for them. They are coming. The Lord is bringing them. Keep clapping. They are coming. The devil is a liar. I know there are a few more people outside. Don't let the devil have you this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I salute you for this great step of faith. In one minute, I'd like you to talk to the Lord with your own words. Go ahead. Don't let the devil bring any voice of condemnation. I don't care what you have done. Where every time you come to Jesus Christ, there is love there is a new beginning talk to the Lord right now in your own words and those of us in the congregation pray for them pray for them right now pray for them inside and outside if you're outside stretch your hands towards the screen and pray for them this is a place of salvation this is a place of equipping thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah those of you in front look at me my brothers and my sisters i love you with all my heart and i salute you for this bold decision i want you to lift your right hand some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears lift your right hand very high in a way you will never forget for the rest of your life 
and say after me from the depths of your heart say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart I admit that I'm a sinner and I believe that you died for me this night I have heard your word that there is an assignment upon my life I repent of my sins cleanse me with the blood of Jesus from tonight I am a new person with a new life and a great destiny I receive eternal life into my spirit I refuse to go back to my past forward ever backward never Holy Spirit come and live in me make me an envoy of your presence let me be a blessing to my generation in the name of Jesus amen now keep your hands lifted let me pray for you father you see the hands of your children I pray that the power of sin over their life is broken I pray that whatever entangles them and takes them into the world that power is broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you from today you will begin to experience the power of God in your life you will begin to experience the life of God in your life you will cease to be ordinary from today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ you will go back and see the things that used to be challenges for you you will see them surmounted already in the name of Jesus Christ please put down your hands and listen Thank you so much for making this great decision. I'd like you to follow the usher. He will lead you and will have your details. We would like to follow you up. Um, let's make it Monday. Let's make it Monday, okay? Monday by 5 p.m. Please come around the chapel, close to the chapel bookstand, inside the chapel. I'll be there to meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. We'll follow you up and pray for you. We'll have your details and the protocol. We'll send you an SMS to guide you and remind you. Appreciate them as they go. Just follow the gentleman. Please wave your hands. Let them see you. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.